Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Sir Optimus International event, Opening Doors to a Bright Future. In advance, may I thank all of the presenters for their input into this afternoon's session. It would be remiss of me as a Sir Optimist who works for gender equality, human rights, peace and security, the areas that our organization was founded on, if I did not speak of the current situation facing many people in Ukraine and Russia. Sir Optimus International stands in solidarity with the people of Ukraine who are resisting the assault on their homeland and with the brave Russian citizens who are publicly voicing their oppositions to this war. This is a desperate time for humanity as the unprovoked invasion of Ukraine has caused death, destruction and misery on a scale not seen for decades. This unjustified act of aggression constitutes a violation of the UN Charter an act of aggression that is a crime under international law and a dangerous threat to global peace and security. We call on our governments as well as the international community to protect civilians in Ukraine and their human rights as they struggle each day of this crisis. We call for an immediate halt to hostilities, for all troops to be withdrawn and for negotiations to take over. There must be green corridors for the evacuation of civilians from cities under attack. I thank Sir Optimus and other people who are opening doors to millions of refugees who have fled from this terror. The guns must stop and the path of dialogue must commence now. And now to our event this afternoon. Across the world, women and girls face multiple barriers and gender-based discrimination in the workplace. This discrimination sets in early from the kind of education girls receive or till which age to the kind of work they're channeled into. In both private and public sectors, women face occupational segregation and multiple barriers, such as access of land, capital, financial resources and technology, as well as gender-based violence due to cultural mindsets and stereotypes. These obstacles make it harder for women to get on an equal footing with men in the world of work. The UN Women Report Beyond COVID-19 Feminist Plan for Sustainability and Social Justice informs us that as the world recovers from the pandemic, growing inequality and the impact of accelerating climate disaster, the need for governments to work together to recover and transform economies and society has never been more clear. The pandemic has drawn attention to a number of crises that systematically undermine gender equality and threaten the survival of people and the planet, such as jobs, care, and climate. When women are empowered in emergency economies, it boosts education levels, creates jobs, promotes agricultural productivity, and alleviates poverty, among a myriad of other positive outcomes. The evidence is clear that gender equality benefits everyone. Let us start opening doors. There is an urgent need to lift people in all facets of society let us open doors. Empowering women is not just a nice thing to do. It is a have to do. We need to challenge the status quo. We need to educate, empower, and enable women to realize their potential and take their rightful places in society. So at this crossroads, facing the choice between doing what we have always done and making the same mistakes, or can we move forward and seize the opportunity to do things differently? We call for open doors for women's access to decent work, social protection and food security. And this needs to be assured as part of doing things differently. We need to open doors to public investments in the care economy, which should be a major pillar of economy recovery in doing things differently. And we need to open door to rapid and radical action by governments to green our economies and harness the transformation in order to promote gender equality in doing things differently. Focusing on SDGs four and five, Sir Optimus International's 70,000 members in over 120 countries advocate for gender equality, development and implement grassroots projects to educate, empower and enable women and girls to reach their economic potential and become innovative leaders in their chosen careers, communities and beyond. Today, we will open doors, highlighting examples from our five federations, as well as informing you of how education and training may open doors to a bright future for women and girls 
through the Soroptimus International present appeal for 21-22. I will now hand over to Lee Elwood Brown, SI Director of Advocacy, who is moderating this event. Thank you. Thank you, President Maureen. Also, thank you for hosting us all continuously. Um, just some housekeeping to start with. Please have your microphones on mute with the exception of the speakers. We'll respond to questions at the end of the presentations, but if you do have questions in the meantime, you can write them in the chat box. And we'd appreciate any feedback from you if you would like to type it into the chat box at any time. Our objective, our presentation objectives today is to showcase the Optimus grassroots pro programs on how women have overcome obstacles to enable empowerment and leadership in the world of work. <clears throat> me. and how doors have opened for women to a bright future through edu educating, empowering and enabling women. The Soroptimus programs and projects that we will present to you today cover, cover both the priority and review themes for CSW 66. You will see how the doors are opening to a brighter future for the recipients of each of these projects. The priority theme uh, for CSW 66 is achieving gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls in the context of climate change, environmental and disaster risk reduction policies and programs. The, re the review theme, women's economic empowerment in the changing world of work. I'd like to um, just introduce our advocacy team. Uh, Bev, are you on here? Yes, I saw you earlier. Do you want to just say hello? Hello, everybody. Bev I'm Bev Cooper. <laughs> Thank you, Bev. And Ula, Ula Madsen. Hello, everyone, again. Thank you, Ula. And uh, tonight we also have Haftus helping us, an SI board member. Haftus, you're behind the scenes. You're there to say hello. I'm here. Good to Thank see you. you. Thank you very much. So we'll start the process. Um, I'd like to call on this, the presentation for SI Europe. Sandra Gonzalez School will be talking through this presentation and she will be here. If you want to say hello, Sandra. She will be here to take your questions later. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sandra gonzalez Hult. So uh, if you have any questions after the presentations, I'm here for you. And please put it in the chat. Uh, I just want to remind you that it's an echo, so not everyone is on mute. No, there's one, um, one lady uh, Hawa, Mariko. Hapkis, can you um, mute that lady? Ah, oh, yes, thank you. And Helen, so I will also mute you. This uh, presentation by SI Europe is on education and economic empowerment in the world of work. You will see from this presentation the great success in economic empowerment, opening many doors to a brighter future. Thank you, Hapkis. There's no sound on the video. Oh. After you need to restart it, it's not uh, playing properly. Pardon? I think maybe you didn't push the little, check the little box before you started the video. Sorry about this. Okay, let's start it all over again because this is really interesting. Here you go. 
Sir Optimist of Europe would like to present the importance of education and economic empowerment, two out of five program areas where we do projects. My name is Sandra Gonzalez Schöld and I am the current program director within the Federation. I am one out of 31,000 members engaged to improve the lives for women and girls through the motto, We Stand Up for Women. I will guide you through three projects in recent years which demonstrate the diversity of education. Sir Optimists in Europe are executing grassroots projects and are actively adapting to the local circumstances. We know that education is a key for a future independent life. As an NGO, we can work with the society and in these three cases, we have financially been part to secure the education or finance the projects to 100%. According to a recent study conducted by UNICEF, together with the SAMS Association in Romania, this country ranks second in the European Union in the birth rate among teenage mothers. Being a young mother means not being able to go to school. Through providing financial aid to two teenagers, they could continue their studies and care for the children. The Soroptimists of Slatina did this together with the support of other Soroptimists, in this case specifically the Danish Union. As you just saw, another benefit of the project was also the possibility to advocate about the importance of education about sexual reproduction, which is not the case at many schools in Romania. In Italy, a national project was initiated in order to improve the future of women in prison, granting support through professional training courses and working activities with a trainer. At the end of the training, the women receive a final certificate to be used in the employment market with the help of social cooperatives inside and outside prisons. 50 clubs were part of this project together with 30 partners and companies which supported and contributed to the project. 350 women attended the training courses and 21 of them got a job in year 2019. The Soroptimists have engaged in mentoring to follow the prisoner trainees in order to continuously evaluate the acquired knowledge after six months and one year after the course. I just mentioned mentoring, and this is something Soroptimists in the Federation are doing on different levels, in the clubs, for younger pupils, but specifically for young professionals up to 30 years old. In the Federation, material has been developed, such as a booklet and e-learning courses, to facilitate all members to be mentors. This was an example of one of our international leadership academies. We know that young professional women are highly educated, but are not getting leadership positions, and we want to change this. We have therefore created international leadership academies for women, for younger professionals. The concept is one week training in leadership with intensive workshops, group works and presentations. Everything is done by and with Soroptimists. In 2021, the European Leadership Academy started in Turkey. And this year, the European Leadership Academy will take place in France, hopefully face to face. 
another academy will take place in Iceland through a cooperation between countries in the northern part of Europe, Sweden, Norway, Finland, Denmark and Iceland. In this case, each country can send five participants and all the training costs are covered by us as an organization. With this type of education through academies, we are the enabler to facilitate the process to advance to new positions and career advancement at work. In addition, we grant scholarships for higher education and also career change from our European Scholarship Fund. The last five years, over 530,000 euro was awarded in scholarships. We adapt our motto we stand up for women also from a financial perspective. Thank you, Sandra. That was very, very informative. It's great to see so many fantastic projects helping women and girls. Is Helen here? Helen Harvey? Yeah. Oh, yes. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, so uh, next I'd like to do call on the presentation for SI Great Britain and Ireland. Helen Harvey is the presenter and she will be here later for questions. Her project is Sustainable Development Goals and Fast Fashion. This subject will make you very aware of the creates numerous jobs for women. However, it is also detrimentally affecting our planet. This reflects the changing world of work for many women. Thank you, Haftas. Hi, my name is Helen Harvey and I'm a member of SI The Rekin. At the beginning of 2020, we secured a grant from the 25th Anniversary Lottery Celebration Fund. Our plan was to hold a conference based on the Sustainable Development Goals and what our community could do at a local level to make a difference. Then COVID struck. How could we stage an event outdoors with social distancing and no large groups? Our club area includes the Ironbridge Gorge World Heritage Site, which attracts many tourists with over 400 visitors a day walking along the wharfage. During COVID, the wharfage was very busy as people used this area to take their exercise. This was an opportunity to reach a wide audience. On researching for our event, we came across a blog by Claire Bayliss on Oxfam Apps. Four shocking reasons fast fashion needs to slow down. Fast fashion is second only to oil as the world's biggest polluter, producing more carbon emissions than aviation and shipping combined. And this is set to more than double by 2050 if the fast fashion sector continues to grow at its current rate. All this so an item of clothing can be manufactured and sold cheaply and then discarded, sometimes after being worn only once or twice. Producing cheap clothing is thirsty work. I was shocked to find out it would take one person 13 years to drink the water to make one t-shirt and a pair of jeans. 13 years! That's more than 10,000 litres and sometimes up to 20,000 litres. It's glugging away much needed clean water from the local community. Poor pay and working condition also exacerbates local poverty to produce clothes that frequently end up in landfill. These are images of the Aral Sea in Uzbekistan taken by NASA Observatory. The Aral Sea has dried up over a period of 50 years. The rivers that fed this lake were diverted, mainly to allow for mass cotton cultivation. Once one of the world's fourth largest lakes, the Aral Sea is now little more than a desert with a few small ponds. The environmental impact from clothing doesn't stop there. Washing synthetic textiles like polyester releases microplastics. An estimated 35% of microplastics in the ocean came from textile pollution. That is the equivalent of 50 billion plastic bottles each year. Fish and other marine animals eat these microplastics, so they may end up back on our plates, literally. And at the end of a garment's often short life, it may end up in landfill. Clothes sent to UK landfill every year weighs as much as the Empire State Building, and that's just the UK. We needed to get this message out there. 
Making adjustments to our clothes shopping habits and the way we dispose of unwanted items is something we can all do. We can keep and wear our clothes for longer and learn to repair or upcycle them, just like on the sewing bee. Buying second hand from charity shops saves money and the environment and after lockdown charity shops had a bumper donation of clothes. Good quality clothes can be donated to charity or sold online and if clothes are in a poor condition, recycle them with the roadside recycle collection. They take old clothes, yes even your pants. There's no reason why clothes should end up in landfill. So, how are we going to get this message across? The Festival of Imagination holds events over two weeks in September, so with their approval we decided to create a trail through Ironbridge with posters in shops and outdoors. These posters would be linked together with a quiz. We printed posters onto old t-shirts which were tied around the trees that line the wharfage along the river. They highlighted the impact of fast fashion and encouraged people to upcycle, resell, donate to charity or recycle unwanted clothes. T-shirts were also pegged up on washing lines strung between the trees in the local car park where we did amuse the car park maintenance team as two ladies of a certain age grappled with a wobbly ladder. <laughs> Some t-shirts were printed with Angry Birds to draw the attention of the children. Angry Birds had teamed up with the United Nations to promote the SDGs and had recently launched a new film. We made the news on the Shropshire radio and were interviewed as to why we were hanging our washing out in the car park. We had lots of positive comments from people out and about who I chatted to when I checked the t-shirts daily whilst walking the dog. One t-shirt was vandalised, it was torn from a tree opposite a local pub and I smiled because it obviously attracted that person's attention and it was soon replaced. To raise awareness of more of the goals we talked to our local shops and cafes and found out the things they did which helped towards attaining these goals. Here are a couple of posters we did for our local chip shop and delicatessen. Similar posters were made for each shop to display and showed the appropriate goals they supported. Our local dog groomer put out clean dog fur for nesting birds in the spring and our local art shop ran free courses on printing for people with mental health problems. The Bolt Hole ran courses on furniture restoration. In all, 12 shops participated. We created a short quiz to encourage the people to look round the shops. Here are just a few of the questions. The answers could be found in the shops and on the t-shirts. The quiz and answers could be accessed and downloaded on the Festival of Imagination website and on our Sigby web page. As partners of the Festival of Imagination, their website also featured information on our club and the Sir Optimist organisation. In the end, what did we achieve? It was good to have positive feedback from local residents and visitors, and it was nice to see a mother explaining the posters to her young daughter, a future clothes shopper. We had radio exposure and coverage from the festival media site and our Facebook site, and we had publicity on the National Lottery and Oxfam Twitter feed. Some of the shopkeepers have since told us that they've gone plastic free. In the end, Covid made us think outside the box and we reached a far wider audience. But most of all, it was a fun thing to do. Thank you very much, Helen. It's a very Thank interesting you. subject and something that to Google fast fashion and what happens to it in a lot of the developing countries is a very, very interesting um, project you can do for yourself to see further. Uh, now I'd like to call on the presentation for SI Southwest Pacific, Isla Wanato from SI Jakarta, Indonesia. The presentation is Lombok, Indonesia Earthquake Recovery Project through water, shelter and capacity building. This ongoing project has and is continuing to develop and empower women and girls after the natural disaster of an earthquake. A strike is... SI Jakarta are opening those doors to these women through education, which provides a greater future for them through leadership, gender equality and development. Thank you.
Greetings from Jakarta, Indonesia. The project I'll be describing to you today is the Earthquake Recovery Project through Water, Shelter and Capacity Building. And this project is located in Lombok, Indonesia. So the project commenced in March 2019 and was funded by the SI President's Appeal of 2017 and 2019. And under phase one, we constructed a new bore, which is now providing water for the entire village. And we also constructed 24 toilets and bathrooms, and the village had never enjoyed wash facilities before. In phase two, we have focused on capacity building, and this phase has been funded by SI and SISWP President Special Appeals. Apart from capacity building programs, we've also focused on community awareness programs, such as health hygiene and sanitation, waste management, climate change mitigation, and disaster preparedness. So why did we choose Rabuk Saku village in Lombok? Through our survey, we found that there was great water scarcity after the quake. As you can see, this well is quite empty and the women would spend hours waiting uh, to obtain a small amount of water each day for their needs. There has always been a high level of poverty and illiteracy in this village. And of the 124 villages, 60% are women and girls. Our partner organization in this project has been the nonprofit Titian Foundation, and we have also had collaboration and support from local and provincial governments. Our major project strategies, our major focus has been on water and wash facilities provision. We've also identified local project champions so that the villagers better understood the aims of the project. We obtained villagers' written consent uh, for, for those who could read and write, they signed the agreements themselves, and for those who couldn't, they were assisted by the village chief. The emphasis in this project has always been on community-driven development and participation at all levels and by both males and females. We've set up village work committees with women in key roles and conducted capacity building programs for women. And these have included weaving. We've actually revived the weaving tradition in this village. We've conducted financial literacy and entrepreneurship programs, sewing, growing vegetables, and basic literacy skills, since 80% of the women in this village are, are illiterate. The positive outcomes. Water and wash facilities are now available to the whole village community. Women are learning income generating skills. And in the midterm project review, 100% satisfaction was recorded. Youths are more involved in community matters these days. We've introduced organic farming principles. And through our Titian partner, we've actually set up a new community learning center. The work and cloths now produced by the weavers in our village are sold locally and overseas and have been purchased by our SI sisters in Japan, in Europe, and also in the US. This project is aligned to the first six SDGs and mainly through the provision of water and sanitation. This has led to better health and well-being, uh, zero hunger, less poverty, more gender equality, and more education for the villagers. Impact and evaluation. There is now sustainable systems in place in this village. Water management is still a major focus. And we've been breaking the bias with women now in leadership roles. The revival of the weaving tradition has had positive economic and socio-cultural impacts in this region. The community programs are changing habits. The younger generation is more involved and disaster preparedness and climate change are better understood. What lessons have we learned in implementing this project? Well, community-driven development and participation are vital for success. Local champions and trainers also lead to greater success because they can, they can communicate communicate better at uh, the village's level. They speak their own dialect and they know the traditions well. 
Inclusion and capacity building have led to women's empowerment and gender equity, and changing mindsets has been taking place, but that's an ongoing process, and we don't expect to change people's uh, mindsets overnight. Teaching by example and providing incentives has led to positive results. And one example of this is we actually conducted a competition in the village not so long ago. And those who received prizes were the households who had the cleanest front yards and who had planted trees and shrubs. <coughs> the gender, gender focus supported by this project include equal opportunities and gender equity, Women as defenders of water and promoters of disaster preparedness and climate change understanding. Empowerment leadership through capacity building and providing women's basic literacy programs. And we've also been able to raise awareness through this project on the negative impacts of child brides and child exploitation. Ms. Ojikata is proud of this project empowering women in Lombok, Indonesia, and hopefully we are providing a better future for the next generation. Thank you. That's a fantastic project. Thank you very much, Isla. Uh, there are questions there, but we will come to them later in the chat box. So next presentation I'd like to introduce from SI Africa, Chinwe and Zenwa Moa, Women Entrepreneurs and Sustainable Development, the project Don't Waste That Seed. Thank you, Havdis. Oh, my apologies, I've got one out of line. America's my, next, SIA, right? Yes, my, my deepest apology. Uh, do I go ahead then? Yes, thank you. Um, I'd like to introduce, sorry, Chinwe, I'd like to introduce SI Americas, President Casico Morito, the Dream Programs and Economic Empowerment. Casico San will show how a well planned program over many years has and continues to provide education and economic empowerment to so many, many women. Uh, president Kasako is the president of SI Americas. Thank you. Oh, I'm Kasako Morita, is... president of Sir Optimist International of the Americas. I'm so excited to speak with you today about SIA's dream programs and economic empowerment at work. Women have made incredible slides in many countries in recent decades, moving into more prominent and senior roles in a variety of industries. Seeing women serving as head of states, CEOs, doctors, educators, and so much more is so inspiring, especially for girls, seeing that they too can live their dreams and be economically independent and successful. Women are economically empowered when they have control over their own finance and well-being, and when they have a voice in the financial decisions to shape their lives and their, the lives of their families. When women and girls are empowered, they have a sense of autonomy, self-confidence, and the power to control their private and public lives. We focus on access to education, because it is the most effective way toward empowerment. And our dream programs, the Live Your Dream Award and Dream It Bid, are how we deliver that impact. We are proud to share that the Live Your Dream Award is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. This award is unique. Club provide fund directly to women who are the financial head of their household and enrolled in an educational program. This indicates that we trust the award recipient and believe that she can determine the best way to use those dollars to support her education. That may mean tuition or books, but could also mean paying for her car repairs so she can attend her class or childcare 
so she can study. In 50 years, the program has distributed over $35 million to about 35,000 women. But it's not just a financial change. Three years after receiving the award, 86% of Libya Dream Award recipients completed their education and improved their standard of living, and 93% of recipients report the award has increased their self-esteem, all of which help them thrive at work. Dream It Beat has reached 84,000 girls since it launched in 2015, and our clubs work in partnership with girls in small groups or a conference setting to provide them with the information and resources they need to be successful through our award-winning seven-part curriculum. Although all girls face barriers because of their gender, we prioritize working with girls who have additional obstacles. By reaching girls while they are still young, we not only can help them stay healthy and safe in the short term, but we can reduce the number of women in crisis in the future. After participating in the program, 88% of girls feel more confident about their future success. 86% feel more prepared to pursue their career goals and 91% created achievable goals for their future. Dream it, be it, is putting them on a path will help them realize their dreams and prepare them for thriving careers in the future. Accelerating economic empowerment for women and girls who have encountered obstacles, the focus of the dream programs is rooted in the agenda for women's equality outlined by the United Nations through the Sustainable Development Goals. The dream programs directly support and contribute to the achievement of the following SDGs. Goal one, end poverty in all its forms everywhere. Goal four, ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Goal five, achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Goal eight, promote sustained, inclusive and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment and decent work for all. Goal 10, reduce inequality within and among countries. The dream programs are preparing women and girls to enter the workforce and become economically empowered through education. With the support and resources from the DREAM programs, we are ensuring women and girls will have access to decent jobs that they will not experience poverty and that we can achieve gender equality. Since <coughs> the 2015 launch of the SDGs, the DREAM programs have reached over 93,000 women and girls and over $14.5 million in education grants have been given to contribute to the future we all want. As we work toward the SDGs together, I know we can look forward to a more sustainable and just world. SIA has a big goal to achieve by 2031 to invest in the dreams of half a million women and girls through access to education. This is an audacious goal, but something that inspire me to keep focused and working toward it every day is a potential future we can all live in. Imagine what workplace 
and communities around the world will be like with half a million more women and girls living their dreams. That's a future I can't wait to see. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President Casico. That is just absolutely mind blowing numbers and dollars associated with that. But now we move on to uh, SI Africa. Um, and Shinwei, I have introduced you previously. Are you happy with that? So the program, the presentation will be Women Entrepreneurs and Sustainable Development. Don't waste that seed. Thank you. After there's no uh, slides. Thank you. Thank you. The Southwest International African Federation chose the wider team in line with the CSWU 66, women entrepreneurs and the benefits of sustainable development. And on the smaller scale, they chose the team, don't waste that seed. In Africa, we are all aware that most of the substance, the farmers are women. The rural farmers are women. And they depend largely on the area of land for farming. So up Miss International African Federation with the team, don't waste that seed. Encourage women and girls, all of us, to keep the seeds aside when you have these mangoes, cashew, all the seeds to keep it aside. And with it, when you are going out of town to throw it into vegetation areas, so that this, we are prone to desert encroachment. We are prone to erosion menace and also food scarcity. This has been proven to help. These women are taught on the need to gather these seeds and throw them into vegetation areas so that when they grow, they can replant them or if it's in a forest, it's already making up for itself, thereby waging the war on erosion menace and deforestation in Africa. SI Espinal de Bamako did the first experiment in Mali. They started the first experiment with the widows. They went ahead to purchase 1.5 hectares of land for these women and they also fenced up the land. Then they shared this land into two. One of, on one side, they encouraged the women to plant vegetables like cabbage, carrot, lettuce, onions. These are vegetables that can grow within the season and thereby sustain the families. Why the other side, they throw these seeds to grow. Most of these plants will take a few years and some few months to grow before they start producing seed. So in order to make it an all round thing, they were encouraged to share it into two and to start that experiment. Also, the club members bought some equip equipment tools, some tools for them, like the wheelbarrows and that, that we help them not to carry this luggage on their heads. This has helped tremendously. The Sotmis International Espinal did not stop there. They went ahead to monitor this program from the beginning to the end. When the farming season commenced, they did coach these women and monitor the progress of this uh, farming in order to grant the success. They visited and made sure that the women are 
going along with their dream in order for it to be a success. Again, they didn't stop there. During harvesting, they also helped the women to, in harvesting and bring out these tools. They helped them to launch these tools to create awareness, create visibility, and help them to sell this to uh, the uh, vegetables. That also gave them the avenue to educate others on this thing, don't waste that seed. And it is very important that all of us should carry this message home. Don't waste that seed. The seeds we throw into those beans can germinate tomorrow and be the fruit of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And if we're encouraged to do that in a various places, we will have a, ve a very good atmosphere with the ozone layer depletion and all that we are being faced today. Again, such occasions affords us the opportunity of media coverage. Sorok Miss needs visibility, and the women <coughs> made sure they had that. On that day, they made sure they had enough coverage, both uh, print media and the, all the medias. And again, is a way of selling Sorok Miss across the country and other country. And that has helped in the visibility. Here, the equipment the women, the club bought for the women was put into use. Most often than not, these rural farmers carry the load on their head and come to town to sell. And they walk long distance to do this. But here, their burdens have been lightened with the wheelbarrows that we are provided, with the other tools that we are provided. And this has helped the health of these women also. Health-wise, it has helped them. And this project, <clears throat> the benefits are enormous. It's an ongoing project because the seed you plant today might take time to germinate. But when it does, the benefits are, it will help in the, the for, deforestation. The desert encroachment is going to check it if it's thrown that side. And also we have the areas of the erosion menace, erosion menace. The seas, if thrown to these areas will also help to check it. There is a project ongoing where cashew, cashew nuts are being used because the root has a lot of, uh, it has a lot, a lot of roots. So they are using it to check the erosion. Another aspect of it is the food it puts on the table because people, when it's grown, pluck these trees, either sell them or eat them. The present project we have presented benefited over 100 women. And these women, it tickles down the, to their family members, the children. They're able to hold their heads high. And as widows, they've benefited from this project a lot. And we hope that it will be an ongoing thing is an idea that SI African Federation wants to sell to others. That please, when you get these seeds, don't throw them away. Throw them into vegetation areas, plant them again, so that tomorrow's uh, children will see the fruits to eat. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chenwei. I must admit, since you, since I first saw your presentation, everything I throw in the compost, I look at the seeds. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's something we can all make a difference with. It's yes. very, very good. Thank you. Uh, next, we'd like to reintroduce our president, Maureen. Um, 
she is going to present for us opening doors for a bright future, which is the SI President's Appeal for 2022 and 2023. Building on a tangible thread running through the very heart of Sir Optimus' work, opening doors to a bright future will cement the Sir Optimus belief and commitment to education throughout the life course and its immense power and fundamental role as a driver for sustainable development, peace and equality. Thank you. Over to Maureen's presentation. Opening doors to a bright future. <laughs> Just imagine how long it would take you to count all the way to 132 million. Each and every one of those numbers is a girl who today is not able to go to school and receive the education that is her basic human right. The right to education as established in Article 26 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights must continue to be the foundation for education and must be expanded to include the right to quality education throughout life. Opening doors to education is a powerful driver for sustainable development and peace. It is one of the strongest instruments for reducing the multiple barriers that affect women and girls around the world. And in fact, all of the sustainable development goals requires education in order to succeed. Irrespective of race, creed and gender, education makes it possible for women and girls to stand out as equals with other persons from different walks of life and to participate fully in society. Opening doors to education helps students develop a strong personal connection to climate solutions, as well as a sense of personal agency and empowerment. It can also have consequential impacts on students' daily behaviours and decision-making that reduces their overall lifetime carbon footprint. Education has the potential to increase young persons' capacity to adapt to the harsh impacts of climate change by building important knowledge and developing a breadth of green skills. Poverty is one of the most important factors for determining whether a girl can access and complete her education. Studies consistently reinforce that girls who face multiple disadvantages, such as low family incomes, living in remote or underserved locations, or who have a disability, or belong to a minority group are farthest behind in terms of access to and completion of education. Gender-based violence is the most extreme, extreme expression of unequal gender relations in society and one of the most widespread violations of human rights. While gender-based violence disproportionately affects women and girls, it also affects men and boys. These abuses take place all over the world in homes, in schools, in workplaces and in communities. But gender-based violence is preventable and education can play a central role in ending it. There are many other barriers for women and girls. Forced marriage and FGM, child marriage and teenage pregnancies, caring responsibilities and the necessity to work, no participation in leadership and decision-making, lack of schools, infrastructure and unsafe environments, limitation to teacher training, and teaching and learning materials, including technology. The objectives for the opening doors appeal are to provide access to education in all its forms for disadvantaged and marginalized women and girls, to provide education for women and girls in a safe, friendly and stimulating environment where there is equality of opportunity and support for all, to develop self-confidence, self-esteem <coughs> and to feel valued through mentoring programs, to enable women, particularly the most vulnerable and excluded in society, to access information, resources and services they need to make positive life choices and to break down barriers to learning and participation for women so that they become fully active citizens and are equipped to pass on their experience to benefit their families and broader communities. Outcomes and impacts. Women and girls will learn and feel safe while they are learning have the opportunities to complete different levels of education and training, acquire the knowledge and skills to compete in the labour market, 
learn the socio-emotional and life skills necessary to navigate and adapt to a changing world, make decisions about their own lives, be better informed about health care and nutrition, have fewer children who are healthier, make decisions on when to marry, contribute to their communities and the wider world. The Opening Door project will be carried out through five different projects across the world. Our first project, which started on the 1st of January, is in the Sinrim re region of Cambodia. Sinrim is a cluster of small villages along a river of the same name. The villages were originally developed around the Buddhist pagodas, and in this area, girls are less likely to receive secondary education, and women, especially those widowed, or one parent family find it difficult to retain their land. They need to become educated, empowered and enabled to rightly take their place in the villages. The project partner will be the Cambodia Community Dream Organisation, CCDO, a charity established in 2007 by a lady called Jenny Lippa. In this project, we will be working with many marginalised families who are missing a generation of older men due to the conflict back in the 1970s, 1980s. The Life Skills Programme, we will be working with newly wedded women, female headed households and students to train them in the various aspects of making themselves financially independent, thus improving their self-confidence and self-esteem. Women and girls who participate in this programme will be able to show the capacity and ability to discuss and make decisions, use their knowledge to gain access to social and health services within their communities, apply business concepts and set up business and small enterprises in their community, develop community indicators for gender equality in community investment plans and activities, and have the confidence to stand up for their rights within society. The other area that will be followed will be ensuring access to education for disadvantaged and marginalised girls aged between 10 and 15 years of age. These are girls who have not returned to school because of many factors. They will attend the Life Skills Programme so that they regain their self-esteem and build their self-confidence so that they may catch up on missed education, thus enabling them to move on to higher education and hence to obtain better work and opportunities. The first group of 73 women and students have been selected and commenced their self-empowerment course. ពីនេះខ្ញុំបានចូលរួមក្នុងតាមវិធីបំណាំងជីវិតបានធ្វើឲ្យខ្ញុំមានភាពខ្លាហាននៃតំណឹងចិត្តនិងភាពជិតជិ
I will leave you with the words of Jenny Lepa, the founder of Cambodia Community Dream Organization. She says, remember, ordinary people can do extraordinary things to change lives. One child at a time, one woman at a time. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. It's very, very good to see. It's quite established already, that project, which is wonderful. I'd now like to call on Ula Madsen. Um, Ula was the chair of the Impact Committee for 2021, and we started planning this session back then. So I would like to call on Ula to take, to facilitate questions and discussions and summary uh, conclusions. Thank you. Thank you, Ula. Thank you, Lee. We have some questions. We have some questions yes. in the chat. Uh, Anna uh, Grimaldi asked during uh, Helen's from um, SI Great Britain Island presentation, is Soptimist chapter working on this issue in PR? That was about the fashion. Um, I don't know if, um, if you will um, answer that Helen and then also Maureen maybe because it says SI. Hi, can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, yes. Um, yes, we are sort of continuing with the project in different sort of forms. Um, a lot of the clubs have now adopted the, uh, well, about asked for information on what we have done. Um, and now we are rolling out sort of other things associated with it. Um, we're trying to get um, media involved with these, um, doing things like um, perhaps having uh, sessions where women only wear the same clothes for sort of a few weeks uh, to try and encourage people to sort of realise that they don't need to live with all this instant clothing. Uh, we really feel it's so important because this is one thing that all women can do at sort of now, where I quite often we look at um, presentations that go on and we think, well, we can't really get involved with that, but all women can get involved and we can sort of make a difference. And I think that's the important message that we're sort of trying to get out to everyone. Um, and, and it is working. We're getting the media sort of interested and uh, we're, we're getting results, so yes. Thank you, Helen, so much. I also think uh, you have brilliant, um, you know, um, examples of how you can do better. And I think that could be really good to uh, send it out to all optimists in, in a way, because as you were saying, we can all do a difference in that way. Thank you so much, Helen. And um, then we have Mirelle. She is asking uh, to the Southwest Pacific project, Isla, what were some of the issues experienced in implementing the project? And how do SI Jakarta overcome these issues? So Isla, please. Yes, I'm just turning on on my uh, microphone. Well, thank you for the question. Uh, we had a number of issues uh, uh, on this project. The first one was, this was actually a water project, but the first well we um, actually constructed had only a trickle of water. And that was because of the extended drought in the area and as a, as a result of the earthquake, yeah? Um, there was a limited uh, amount of water. So that was our first challenge. Uh, finding skilled workers was another challenge, a challenge that uh, we um, met. And also we were dealing with a very isolated village and many of the villagers were uneducated. Um, they believed that um, poverty was their fate in life. And so when we, we asked them, well, how would you like to improve your lives? They said, well, we'd like to learn this and that, but um, it probably won't improve our lives. But over time, over the three years, we have changed uh, uh, that mindset, yeah? Uh, but we're still working on, on changing attitudes. For example, some of the traditions about how uh, young girls must get married early, yeah? Some as young as 12, we're working on changing um, mindset 
debates about that. So we, we had a number of challenges and then of course COVID came along. And so uh, that uh, uh, created some delays on the project, uh, at least six to eight months. Mm. Thank you, Nina. Okay, uh, then Nina Smart has a question. She thanks uh, for the SI Africa project and uh, also asking media coverage is brilliant for West Africa. What was the impact in the communities that learned about the project and about Soptimist? So that is for Twinwe. Thank you. The report from the women uh, was uh, tremendous. The women that participated uh, now into it and they are spreading the good news. Actually, it was through that uh, media coverage that we first of all saw it online that they did such a thing. So, and we, uh, we started inquiring, plus there are reports on, uh, to the platform of uh, self. The women are now truly implanted into it. And we are that's why we are spreading the message because that is just a pilot project. And it's something that everybody should key into. Uh, plant a tree. The easiest way to plant a tree is by having your, uh, that seed not thrown away, but make sure you throw it in a vegetation area where it can naturally germinate. Mostly in Africa, most of the seeds we have here are still natural ones. They are not, uh, uh, they are mostly organic. They are not, uh, they, uh, so you can plant that. Thank you. Thank you, Trinwe. I think also it um, answers Gladys' question because she's asking what seeds are you planting today? So um, then she is saying something uh, really beautiful. In addition to planting seeds for sustainable stuff, substance, are you planting seeds of peace and unity, seeds of nurturing and constructing nations for a better tomorrow? Thank you, best yeah. sister Twinwe. Let us be the seeds we plant. Blessings. That was really wonderful. Thank you, Gladys. And uh, then there were some questions from Chris Knight uh, about um, the wonderful, um, uh, what is it called? Life dream, dream for life, life for dream. Um, I just have it here. The dream program. The dream program. Yeah, the dream, sorry. Yeah. And um, she was asking, are some of them, um, are they becoming um, self-optimist? And um, it was both Joanna and uh, it was also Jacqueline answering that they, there are a lot of them uh, being sub to me. So that is really good news. And that um, really, um, I, I just want to ask uh, Sandra and Nilgun Pakan is here also today. And Nilgun is from um, SI Turkey. And uh, she was one of the leaders of the Turkey's um, a leadership academy um, last year. So maybe we can ask uh, her and also Sandra if they have some experience of um, the leadership uh, members being subtimist. Thank you, thank you, Ulla. Uh, last year uh, we had leadership academy, uh, but unfortunately uh, we couldn't uh, make it uh, face to face. But even under uh, pandemic conditions, we were able to arrange Leadership Academy virtual. It was a very successful Leadership Academy. We had uh, 27 young girls from uh, Turkey and from other European countries. And also uh, good news, uh, seven participants from Leadership Academy now uh, started in March SIE mentoring program. And so uh, I wish it will be a sustainable project. Uh, so the transition from Leadership Academy to SIE mentoring program, and hopefully further on scholarship guarantees. And at the end, I wish they will become young soar optimists. So I wanted to summarize our last year's experience. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nilgun. That was great. I can just add a bit about the Nordic Leadership Academy. Uh, we will continue to uh, strive to have Softimist afterwards. Uh, but as Nilgun is saying, it's a good way to, uh, to have them to have a mentor first and then become Softimist afterwards. And um, we have succeed with some, but we will, we will do much better in, in the coming years. We will try that for sure. Yeah. So, um, I, are there any more questions? Ulo, there is a comment from Jenny Morlow. Please take uh, that. Seeds from GM modified produce will not germinate, I understand. So I'm assuming that's for Chinwe. Seeds from GM. No, I so said most, most, most plants in uh, uh, Africa are mostly natural, still organic. Many of them are organic. When you get them and you're able to throw them into vegetation, they grow on its own. So the GM modified are not so much here. They are into the factories they use to produce, and, but the ones people eat, um, mostly organic in Africa. Okay, thank you, Trinway. Any more questions? Now is the time. Okay. I have a question. Yes, good. Penny. <laughs> hi. Hi, I have a question for Chinway. Um, are the seeds that you need, um, are, are there any other seeds that we can send you? What, what, do the, what seeds do women need that perhaps you don't have? I, none in particular. If you have any one, we can discuss on that because uh, that way also, none in particular, because we're not uh, concentrating on a particular seed like oranges, mangoes, all these are uh, what the women are encouraged to replant. So anyone you have, we can discuss on that offline. Okay, thank you. That thank sounds you. to be a good cooperation. Thank you, Penny. So if not anymore, I will just wrap up a bit. And first of all, um, Thank you so much uh, to the speakers. I know Maureen will also thank you. But I take the opportunity to say uh, you did a brilliant job. Thank you so much. So today we have been presented with impressive projects by the five federations and the SI President's Appeal, all with an important impact on women and girls. Soptimists all over the world work hard so women and girls can overcome their obstacles to enable empowerment and leadership in a world of work and in all aspects of life. This is the reason why women and girls through Soptimist offering education, empowerment and enabling opportunities will have the possibility to open the doors to a bright future. Soptimists have um, for over 100 years made a difference to women and girls, which we will continue to do the next 100 years with yet more strength and power. So I'm really proud to be a Soptimist today and several have been writing that in the chat and I'm sure you can agree to that. If you do that, please wave and say you are proud to be a Soptimist. That, that could be a wonderful picture. Thank you so much. So I wish good luck and success with the projects and programs work within the five federations and good luck and success to the President's Appeal. Maureen, over to you. Thank you, Ella. Well, I am inspired once more. Uh, before we finish the session, I just want to say thank you to a number of people. May I thank Lee, Ulla, and Bev for their work at, as advocacy team at SI. They have absolutely done a brilliant job bringing this all together. Haftas for her technical skills in showing the videos and slides because I tried it and I failed. So I'm glad that we have Haftas there to help us. 
Uh, may I remind you to visit our Seroptimus International Exhibit booth, where you will find information on our events and on the projects that you have just been listening to. I would like to thank the Federation presenters, Sandra, Helen, Isla, Kazuko and Chinwe. You have brought the projects to life for us all. Thank you for what you do. And I'm so proud that you've been able to show how Seroptimus across the world have opened doors to those less fortunate and also change lives. We do have another event this evening with Women for Water Partnership. Please join us at that event. It's planned for 8 p.m. UK time and it is on the NGO CSW uh, platform. So you're not too late yet to register for that. And last but not least, I have to say thank you to you because you have made the event today. Your interest inspires us to do more. I know that Seroptimus across the world are opening doors to many, many women and girls. So please continue with your awareness, advocacy and action. You're educating, empowering and enabling women and girls to take their rightful place in our communities today. I'm just going away inspired once more. So thank you so much indeed and have a nice afternoon or evening or morning or night, wherever you may be. <laughs>